Welcome to episode two of Crash Course, where I take a look at the crashes you lot have been having, try and spot why it went wrong to stop you eating it like this. But before we get into it, make sure you subscribe and hit that little bell icon over there so you get a notification every time we make an upload. First video has been sent in by Ruben in sunny South Africa. Check this out. This is friend Daniel. Uh, wow, it's a big one. And anyone who's had that horrible feeling of getting bucked over the bars on a jump just knows how horrible this is. Well, I'm not in sunny South Africa, but I am in sunny-ish South Wales, in Bike Park, Wales. And I've got a little jump over there and hopefully I can show you why this went wrong. First, let's look at the actual ramp to take off the jump. It looks to me like it's quite kicky. By that, I mean that it's quite a short takeoff that's quite steep, so that when you hit it, actually, it's almost like hitting a wall. It's gonna try and slow you down, and that can start throwing the weight forward. So it's not always your technique. Sometimes, actually, the jump isn't built that well. Got a good example here of quite a nice, mellow takeoff. But when you hit it at speed, it is gonna send you up and into the air. But let's go full slow-mo, see what's going on with the body position. Right, now I think to me it looks more obvious than in slow motion. If you pause it on the takeoff, you see Daniel is actually stood up. When the bike is actually just starting to get into the air, front wheel's up into the air, but Daniel's already stood up. So what he's trying to do there is actually lift the bike up into the air. It's a really common one with jumping where people just feel like they want to just launch straight away. But actually what you need to do is launch one wheel at a time. So front wheel, and then what you need to do is pause and stay in quite low and to the back of the bike all the way until the rear wheel gets to the top of the jump and then you stand up and forward. So basically you're helping the front wheel go into the air and then the back one and you should then get a nice sort of launch so the bike follows a nice curve in the air rather than the front wheel going up into the air and then the weight going up, stood up, because that is then sending the back wheel up already. So the back wheel's not used much of the jump but it can still send all the weight forward and that's the big problem here. Next one comes from Wesley in Ballantyne Park. He's trying to ride his very first wall ride from end to end and he says he doesn't have enough speed. Oh well, yeah, it, you said it already, you didn't have enough speed there. So you need quite a lot of speed sometimes to stick to a wall ride. So you need that force. But also what you can do, if you realize you haven't quite got enough speed and you're halfway around it, you can try and pop off early. So it's definitely down to a bit of experience this, doing lots of wall rides. But in this case, you could have done that. You could have just carved, as you slow down, carve a bit more of a corner and then do a little manual to come off that wall ride early. Don't forget that if it's wet, it's gonna make that wood much slipperier as well. Talk about wood being slippery when it's wet. Well, Dan finds out the hard way here. If you're offline, if the trail is a bit off camber or if you're trying to make a big corner on wet wood, then just take it very easy. Ideally, you try and not ride it when it's super slippery like this, but sometimes you will. Just be really careful because making a corner like this is almost always going to end in a crash. Oh, that's slick. This one is sent in by David, and this is in Maydina Bike Park in Tasmania, but it's really muddy, and this is his friend Spud. It's always the friend that falls off, isn't it? And a uh, good name for him, Spud, because he tries to bury himself back in the ground here. Uh, some pretty good body surfing down the trail. Uh, but as you can see, uh, Spud didn't quite have it nailed as he'd hoped. Really, this drop is too big to try and roll in that situation. So at that speed, you're gonna to need to do something like a manual to keep the front wheel up so you don't get sent straight over the bars, or possibly go a bit faster, but you can't always do that because if it's super muddy like that, you're gonna end up being too fast and out of control. So let's look at going nice and slow and doing a manual. Well, there's a couple of different ways of thinking about this, but you should end up in the same position to the back of the bike with really your weight off the front wheel. So the first one is just getting to the edge of the drop and doing a manual. So you're down and back, nice to the back of the bike, front wheel goes light, don't go over the bars hopefully. Or the other way is wait until you get to the edge and then just simply slide the bike forward. You'll end up to the back of the bike, nice and safe position, 
and your front wheel should stay light. Only thing to really be aware of is not going too low and hitting that back tire because that's going to stall the bike completely and that can send you over bars as well. Because also if you're high and then your speed stops for any reason, your momentum stops, all that weight is then going forward towards the bars. This one is sent in by Braden uh, from Bowling Green in KY, which I presume is Kentucky. Uh, this is his friend again, I tried this jump and didn't keep his foot in his pedals and hit the ground and his bike pretty hard, but he got up and walked away without any injuries, which is good news. Uh, what I would say from my point of view though, it wasn't the foot coming off that caused the crash, that was definitely part of it, but I think the crash was caused by not taking off straight. So it's really important on a jump like that to try and look to where you're going so that you ride off the takeoff, either straight or sometimes turning, but you need to be aiming for where you're going. It looks to me like there's a bit of a pull and the bike goes sideways and then uh, your friend tries to pull with his feet to try and straighten the bike up and that's when the foot comes off and the crash happens. But also, if you look, the front wheel doesn't land until the flat. So really with something like this, you're aiming to sort of what I call butter it into the landing. So you go front wheel, then back wheel into that landing. So that if your front wheel is slightly sideways, it lands as early as possible, you can straighten up. If your front wheel doesn't land all the way to the bottom and it's sideways, then you're probably always gonna crash. For this example, I'm going to be coming into this quite fast, it's quite a big jump, and there is a corner, you can see there's a big berm there. So what I'll try and do is do most of my corner in there, hit this takeoff as straight as possible. But as you can see, it is a slight hip. I do need to be turning a little bit in the air to the right to get on that landing. But it's just a real case of looking to where you need to be, turning on the takeoff and carrying on that bit of a hip in the air. By hip, I just mean corner in the air with my body weight and the bike and landing, like I said before, front wheel then back wheel on all of that landing. Keep sending us your crashes using the uploader. There's a link in the description down below this video to that. Uh, stick them in the fails and bales bit and we use them in the dirt shed, sometimes on Instagram and use them here and I'll try and help you out. Uh, more of these videos coming soon. If you want to see a video on how to nail your jumps over there and for your drops over there, thumbs up if you like this video. Cheers.